Good evening. Welcome to the November 15th Troy City Council meeting. We're pleased this evening to have with us uh, Pastor Talatha Pennington from the Community of Christ Troy Oaks Church, and that will be followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. And I should explain that the Scouts were scheduled to be here uh, tonight, but they're going to be rescheduled into uh, December at their request. And uh, so we'll just have our regular Pledge of Allegiance. Pastor, will you please rise? Gracious God, we come to you tonight full of gratitude that we live in a country where we have the freedom to gather, that in our gathering together we can express our concerns, we can express our comments, we can debate, deliberate, and come to decisions without fear of reprisals from others. We are so mindful of your goodness to us. We know that you care about every decision we make as families and as individuals, but you care equally as much for the decisions that we make as groups of people who meet, whether they are uh, churches or neighborhood organizations or city governments or state or national, that each decision is some of part of your concern. And so tonight, we come asking for your blessing on those who meet here in this chamber, that those who speak, whether they are part of the elected and selected officials, or whether they are citizens expressing their opinions and concerns, that each person will feel valued and uh, feel that their, uh, dis their words are important. And so, Lord, uh, we come in gratitude and pray that your wisdom and your spirit will guide and direct that truly this community where we live, work, worship, and play will become a beacon of hope and justice for all those who live in the surrounding areas. And this we pray in the name of your son, Jesus. Amen. I pray to the to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Pastor. It's always nice to see you. Have a good evening. May we have the roll call, Mrs. Bartholomew? Mayor Schilling? Here. Councilmember Belchamini? Here. Fleming? Here. Hourlack? Here. Kerwin? Here. McGinnis? Here. Slater? Here. Quorum present. Uh, this evening, we begin with a certificate of recognition. This is a uh, proclamation to Pam Brady, recognizing America, American Recycles uh, 2010. It all comes back to you. So while Pam comes down this way, I'll head on down to present this on behalf of council. I still say I have this fear here that it's electric. <laughs> Did you stand on it? You're going to get shocked. <laughs> And I think that's the reason. Uh oh, got to get the glass. For the small print. <laughs> Well, it's nice to see you, and it's been another year already. Yes. But years just fly by fast, don't they? <laughs> well, we keep recycling. <laughs> that's right. That, that's right. Um, this proclamation for America Recycles uh, 2010 has quite a bit of information in it, which I think should be of interest to folks and encourage them, of course, to do even more recycling. Whereas the world has changed a lot in the past century from individually wrapped packaged food to servings, uh, individually packaged food servings, to disposable diapers, more garbage is generated now than ever before. The average American discards 7.5 pounds of garbage every day. 
Our garbage, our solid waste stream, all goes to landfills where it's compacted and buried. And whereas to focus the nation's attention on the importance of recycling, businesses, industries, government agencies, nonprofit organizations, and individuals have joined together to celebrate America Recycles 2010 and are encouraging their employees, staff, customers, membership, and all citizens to pledge to buy more recycled content products starting today. And whereas participating in America Recycles 2010 is one way our citizens can help raise awareness about the need to reduce waste by reusing, recycling, and buying recycled products. And whereas the more we recycle, the less garbage winds up in our landfills and incineration plants. By reusing aluminum, paper, glass, plastics, and other materials, we can save production and energy costs and reduce by up to 75% the negative impacts that the extraction and processing of virgin materials has on the environment. Plastics made from precious and non-renewable petroleum and aluminum, which is mined from bauxite, is especially important to recycle. And whereas recycling helps protect our resources, our environment, and our quality of life, the entire loop, reduce, reuse, recycle, is completed when we buy products made from recycled material. And whereas from July 2009 to June 2010, the city of Troy recycled 4,375 tons of glass, paperboard, cardboard, newspaper, metal, tin, and plastic, and 10,547 tons of compost. And whereas state and community leaders need to spread the word about the excellent programs they have established and the growth of markets for recyclable materials and the importance of buying recycled products. Now therefore be it resolved, the City of Troy City Council hereby proclaims America Recycles 20, 2010 in Troy, Michigan and urges all Troy residents to reduce, reuse, and recycle. Be it further resolved that the America Recycles 2010 is celebrated year round to encourage people to recycle and buy products made from recycled materials. And the theme for America Recycles in 2010 is, it all comes back to you. And this is presented this 15th day of November, 2010, signed by myself and all members of council, and of course on behalf of council. Mm -hmm. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Would you like to say a few things, Pam? Okay, you wanna stand yeah. there, okay. I can't put it better, you said it perfectly. Uh, all I wanna do is remind you that this is not coming to me. It's coming to all of the residents uh, who live in Troy and who work in Troy. Uh, everybody who recycles, this is our proclamation that we will continue to do so. I'm just accepting it on your behalf. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. Thank you. For those of you that aren't aware, uh, the reason that it, this proclamation is given to, to Pam each year, even though she's accepting it on behalf of all of you, is that she was one of the first ones to get us to going with the uh, recycle program here in Troy, among others that uh, encouraged that. And she has continued to be involved in that program uh, personally and putting in a lot of time and effort on uh, each and every year. So that, that is why um, Pam Brady is selected as the person to receive that. Uh, that concludes the uh, certificates of uh, recognition and there are no carryover items uh, tonight or public hearings. So we go to uh, public comment and I need to count here to see if we can stay at five minutes or if we'll need to go to three. So excuse me for just one moment. Uh, 
I see 13 names and our limit is at 15. Uh, so we will continue with the five minute um, time frame that is in the um, rules of procedure this time. So uh, again, uh, I think it works pretty well to call the five people and they can kind of work their way to the uh, aisle that way when it is their turn to speak. Uh, they can uh, proceed to the microphone. So I'll call the first five. Um, Janice Daniels, Audrey Zambruski, uh, Tony Haddad, Ernest Smith, and uh, Tim Croner. If those people would come up in that order, please. Thank you. Mrs. Daniels, you're first. Thank you. Good evening, Mayor, Council, Management, Staff. Um, this issue with the library and the and the taxing, the budget, it's so important. I have to keep coming back to this. Um, it seems though that whenever the issue of wages is brought up, the discussion always ends with the fact that there's a contract and we can't break it. And I understand that. So I have a plan. I have a plan that I wanna offer for your consideration. It's called the Voluntary Pay Cuts Immediate Action Required Plan. This has nothing to do with personalities or persons. This is simply procedural. Mr. Zerlig, you're making $220,500 a year. You have two assistant city managers. Mr. Lamorado, you're making $221,000 a year. Mr. Miller, $182,500 a year. We have a city attorney, Lori Blum, who's making $193,863 dollars a year. And we have a gentleman named James Nash, who's the final financial services director. He makes $198,503 a year. Now I look at the average salary of an attorney in Troy, and that salary is $68,000 a year. I looked at a help wanted ad that was posted on November 5th of 2010 for a chief financial officer in Farmington Hills. The job requires experience dealing with the full scope of financial administration, setting up policies and procedures to ensure compliance, managing banking relationships, developing and managing the budgets, financial forecasting, etc. The candidates have to have seven years experience, a bachelor's degree in finance or accounting, an MBA and a CPA is a strong preference. The salary being offered is between $100,000 and $125,000 a year. And the benefits that are listed is four weeks paid vacation. That's all. Now looking at the city hierarchy that is beneath we the people, because I have to remind you that it is we the people who are at the top of the hierarchical chart of decision making in the city of Troy as well as in the entire United States. But now we have five people at the highest level of this city's government earning combined total compensation packages of a hundred, no, excuse me, of a million $16,500 a year. Did you hear me? That's a million dollars that we're spending on five people. We probably could hire Donald Trump to run the city for that kind of money. And now you want money from me? And you want money from my taxpaying friends here in the city of Troy? And you can't find the money to keep our library open? I want a half a million dollars immediately cut from these five people's compensation packages voluntarily. And if they refuse, then they probably should be fired or they should resign and we should fi find average people to run our city. They might do a better job. That's your start. Then there's 14 other top level compensation packages that need to be slashed immediately. And that's yet another $1 million of savings. So now we have $1.5 million to keep our library open. And I feel certain that you could find another million dollars if you look at our city government from a need to have basis rather than a nice to have basis that used to work in better times. One comment aside, I started my conversations with you many months ago saying that I think that the police department should be completely out of the budget and I still hold true to my words for the most part. I actually think the chief of police should earn an extraordinary compensation package. His job involves the management of persons who risk their lives on a daily basis to keep the city of Troy safe. That deserves good compensation. But I do think that the police unions should continue their cost-cutting analysis, but not by firing the lowest level employees who represent our futures, 
but by taking a serious look at the compensation packages of the mid-level, long-term desk employees who have become fat with the excess of, of, of successful economic life in America prior to 9-11-2001. With this type of focus, I think you could find the money that you need to save our library, and maybe the community could quit putting the blame on the friends of the library with no new taxes because that's misdirected at best. And in fact, it's very discouraging to hear the group called liars or, or, or uh, 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 saying that, that we, we're doing this with malice. All we're trying to do is make an honest effort to cut this city's budget. And I think I showed you a couple of ways that you could start to do that. And I thank you for your time. Our next speaker is Audrey Zembrowski. Good evening, Mayor and Council Members. Um, I just want to go back to last week's council meeting. And uh, I know Mr. Councilman Hollerwick sent out a letter. I didn't read it. I may have saw it, but I didn't read it. But I felt very bad when Councilman Slater turned around, and this is not like him to do something like this, since I've known him a long time, for a long, quite a few years, is to raise that letter up and say, I want to talk with you man to man and the rudeness that was shown. And man to man does not mean bring it up in front of all the public and everything. Go and talk man to man. There's plenty of rooms in this building that anybody can go and talk. But I just thought it's, it was not like you, Mr. Slater, to say things like that. And I'd like to, on uh, N7, where it says additional information on streamlining boards and committees, I wish that they could have put a little bit more in there to let the committees in the, in the, that are going to be streamlined who they are because some of them won't know because they don't come to the meetings and, at, and nobody will know how to tell them. But if they're watching, they at least would be able to know what it was. Okay, thank you. Our next speaker is uh, Tony Haddad. Good evening. Thank you so much for allowing me to speak in the front of you. And uh, this is, uh, has to do with the uh, last meeting about uh, the election, uh, where the chief uh, posing with uh, Tim Burns uh, picture and, uh, and have a code, you know, for to, to describe him uh, for uh, possibly for help him in his campaign. Now, I am here tonight to respond to the city manager and the chief explanation last week regarding the political ad where Chief Mayor was posing with uh, uh, posing and endorsing Mr. Tim Burns. Once again, I am one calling for formal investigation under the city uh, Troy City Charter, Chapter Four, Section Four Point Eight, Title Investigations. Our chief is a public servant, and I believe he has crossed the line. And the reason I say that, because I'm Republican and he supported Democrat. He took somebody's side when he's supposed to serve all the people. I was, uh, I as my citizens, uh, as uh, I as many citizens of Troy, has the following questions. At the time of the photo was taken with Commissioner Burns was the chief on duty and being paid by the city? Question number two, is the chief allowed to display his official badge as seen in the photo on his belt when taking a photo that is obviously intended to be used in a political ad such as this one? Of course, you know, the ads were in the Troy, uh, Somerset Gazette and Troy Times. And they were not out in the same time, I believe. There's a few days different. You know, the chief could have seen the one and, and, and catch up with the other one before it go, you know, uh, with the Somerset. Or call Tim, say, Tim, what's going on, you know, so. The, uh, the other point is, the other question is, is the chief, uh, is the chief allowed to wear a shirt that display what appears to be a city of Troy logo that's in the, in the photo. Uh, the other question, why is there an official Troy police vehicle in the background? Another question, can the chief use one of our official police vehicles 
for a political ad or to support a political campaign? Another question. I see that the, sh the police vehicle is not in the parking lot of the police station. Of course, I don't know if, if, uh, if it was on the grass of the city, which grass, I'm not sure. But I'm just wondering if it was on the city grass, why it's on the grass, the, the car shouldn't be parked on the grass, that's not a parking spot. In, in, in my many trips around the police station and city complex, I am not aware of any parking space that are on the lawn. The other question, how did the police vehicle get to that spot? Did the chief have it parked there for the photo by a city employee who was on duty? The other question, in the city charter, chapter three, administrative service section 1.72, department rules, it states that the, chief, uh, the police chief may prescribe rules for the government of police officers in the city, of the city, because those rules are not available to the public. I request the city council conduct an investigation and refer to any rules, policies, regulations, order, memos, etc., by the, by, uh, by the chief of police that reference what is and is not allowed by police department employees. I also request that the chief be held to the same standard he held his officers and that if determined that he has violated any city policies or department's policies that he be disciplined accordingly. I also request that officers in the department be interviewed as to the treatment they have received as a result of their off-duty political position on recent campaign such that of the most recent millage vote. Now, Mr. I'm going to stop over here. Sure. Mr. I'm going to stop minutes, over here. Five we'll, minutes is up. Yeah, sure. We'll continue next meeting. Thank you so much for the opportunity. God bless you. We had a response on the item uh, last time. When we're finished, we'll ask for a response here. Yes, go ahead, sir. Yes. Thank you. I'm Ernie Smith. I believe this relates to item number five in your agenda this evening. Is this the appropriate place yes. to talk about yes. that? Yes. This type. Uh, this time is for things on the agenda or not on the agenda. Thank you. Yes. Um, I've been nominated by my neighbors to uh, to speak to this issue. I have uh, have two statements that I would like to read to you. If you would like copies of them, I would be glad to uh, distribute them. Or not. Uh, instead of using up your time, if you give them to the clerk, then we'll pass them along. Thank you. Is this on five? Yes, it is on item five. Okay. Go ahead, sir. The, the first statement is from, uh, from my neighbor, uh, Dick Lanier, who lives in um, uh, lot or owns lot uh, 108. Uh, and I just will read what, uh, what, what Dick has to say. For most of 40 years, three families have lived in adjoining lots. We've worked hard, raised our families, and met our fiduciary responsibilities to our community by maintaining our properties and being good citizens. Now we are faced with an issue that will change our lives dramatically, and that is an, the, the sidewalk that one is proposed to be put into our backyard. Uh, I present the following for consideration. The community and the school has lived with the present sidewalks for over 40 years, and it's obviously served the need, and it's been allowed as a walkway in the area. The existing sidewalk that goes to the school is less than 100 feet to the east. That's a, uh, a public sidewalk within 100 feet. The proposed sidewalk will be less than 100 feet from our living, dining, patio area, reducing privacy. Proposed sidewalk will isolate another neighbor in concrete from three sides and reduce patio privacy. Proposed sidewalk will empty into the third neighbor's yard and 15 feet from that patio. 
The proposed sidewalk will bank children across the street in the middle of the block, creating a safety issue. Cars are already dropping children off at this point and increasing blind spot safety issues. Regarding the easement, I suggest that after 40 years it has demonstrated there is no need. After 40 years, do the adjoining properties have rights to this property? Was a city official overheard stating, if we don't grab it now, we'll lose it? Do the adjoining properties that have established irrigation, etc., for years have some rights to that property? All three families are senior citizens. This sidewalk will dramatically reduce their property values. The estimate of $50,000 to my home alone. That's referring to Mr. Lanier's property. As a 40 year original owner, I can state that the reason this sidewalk was not installed was because it made no sense and my home would have been most difficult to sell. This is described as a portal sidewalk and most surrounding cities are removing them because of cost and danger to adjoining properties. Troy is broke. Spending $20,000 for this sidewalk and 500 plus per year for maintenance makes no sense. These are difficult times for all of us. Those in our who are in or close to retirement look to the value in their homes and what they thought would be investments for the future. This would dra dramatically impact retirement goals. The city of Troy has similar problems and reports a $24 million shortfall over the next four years. Neither of us can afford to duplicate a sidewalk that has served this neighborhood for 40 years. If there are resources for concrete, they are much better spent on subdivision streets that are in disrepair. After reviewing this matter, I hope you will agree with me. The logical choice is for the city of Troy to vacate the right of way while retaining the easement. Again, that's the, the remarks from, uh, from Mr. Lanier. This is the remarks from myself and my wife and my neighbor, uh, Kathy O'Brien. I think there, there are three points I would like you to consider. The first is, there's no evidence this sidewalk will improve safety. Every Hill School principal for at least 25 years prior to Mrs. Brzezinski has come to the opposite conclusion. They've in fact asked parents not to have their children enter the school by way of the field and through the walkway. And they've been instructed to use a sidewalk. That's the way all of our children went to Hill School. Secondly, on the safety issue, the unmarked crosswalk connecting the walkway north of Renshaw Drive will in fact be more dangerous if a concrete walkway is put in. If you look at this area, you've got a concrete drive, um, walkway coming to Renshaw, then crossing Renshaw. Now, please imagine a child on a bicycle, a skateboard, roller blades coming down here, and I'm, I'm on this concrete way. I'm looking across in front of me. There's another piece of concrete that I'm headed toward, and it's unsafe. And if there were any way I could have a little more time, I would certainly appreciate it. But we would ask that you vacate the, the uh, lot. When you get to the item, if you would please look at the second set of comments that I've not had time to finish, I would certainly appreciate it. We will look at those, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Yes, next we have uh, Tim Croner. And before you start, Tim, I'm going to, don't start the clock for him yet. I'm going to call the next five people. Um, John, <clears throat> excuse me, John Wells, Richard Peters, James Savage, Linda Kaima, and Kelly Jones. Would those people come up next, please? Yes, Mr. Croner. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Uh, my name is Timothy Kerner. And uh, I last addressed you in April. Uh, probably most of you have forgotten. I wasn't here very long, uh, maybe 30 seconds. Um, I was reading a book on libraries. The book was entitled, This Book is Overdue. And uh, I don't know if any of you had a chance to read that. You have a busy schedule, I know. But uh, uh, I found a quote from that book that I, that I recited to you. And I'd like to, uh, to say it again. The quote was, in times of economic crisis, a librarian is a terrible thing to waste. I read that because I thought it was pretty good advice. But unfortunately, in May, about a month later, uh, I don't think you followed that advice, or I should say uh, four of you uh, at that point voted to stop funding our public library. The mayor and 
the three council people to the mayor's left, to our right. And so, as a result, the Troy Public Library will close soon. The Troy Public Library will close soon. My wife and I have spent the last six to eight months uh, talking to a lot of people, to most of you, and to a lot of other people as well. Uh, one of those was a high Oakland County executive. We had an interesting conversation with him one afternoon, and I'd like to give you a couple of quotes from what he said. I took uh, copious notes here during the conversation. He said, he said it would be, quote, literal suicide for Troy if the library is ended. And then he said, the city will never recover. The city will never recover. He went on to say something else that I found pretty interesting. Direct quote, core services should include the library for a city. Core services should include the library. Now I find that interesting because I hear the city manager uh, sort of separating the uh, library from the core services. I've heard him say that several meetings and uh, I certainly disagree with the, the city manager on that. And so as a result, the Troy Public Library will close soon. So I have a few questions here, a couple of questions I'd like you to uh, comment on in the council comment section if that's okay. Um, I'd like to know when the library will actually close. We hear a lot about July 1, but uh, when will it actually close? Can you close a library overnight? I don't think so. Any more than you can stop a 1,000 foot freighter on the Great Lakes on a dime. You can't do it. Furthermore, how do you close a library and who will do the closing? What about the library employees? Do you think they'll stick around for the bitter end? I suspect that most of them are looking for jobs. Who's going to close that library? The council? I don't think so. Well, anyway, I came up here a few months later from April because I was distressed at what I saw in my living room last uh, Monday night when I watched your meeting, especially the end of it. Mr. Fleming had introduced a resolution for you to <clears throat> start talking about the, the library and the budget. And uh, it was shot down by the same four people here. And as I say, that distressed me because we don't have time. We don't have time to stall. We don't have time to wait for another group of people to uh, tell us what to do or what would be good. You need to work right away. You need to stop your feuding, your political agendas, thoughts about your political careers in the future, and start working together tonight to save our library. I believe strongly that a city without a library is a city not worthy of living in. Thank you. Uh, next speaker is uh, John Wells. Mr. Wells. Good evening, Mayor. Good evening, Council and uh, Troy officials. Um, I wanted to introduce myself. My name is John Wells. I'm a first year member of the Troy Chamber of Commerce. Um, and uh, as you know, the Troy Chamber of Commerce, our mission is to assist the business environment, promote it, our community um, now and in the future and during these difficult economic times. Uh, Michelle Hodges and her team members and the 19 board members are working hard to try to promote that business. I have worked in Troy for uh, more than 15 years for an automobile supplier uh, since 1994. I've been a resident of Troy since 1995 and I do love our city. Um, the, um, one of the things I think our, 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 our tough times are still ahead. Decisions will be very tough. I attended the meeting last week and it was very easy for me to see the divide in the city, not only um, the council, but the people. And I'm hoping that this can change um, because I, I think the mayor, the council, and even the city officials, along with the citizens during this, we must try to work together. It's easy to be, um, it's easy to hinder a process. It's not always easy to benefit it. I think all of us could say, how can I benefit this process, especially during these next couple years. And I just have one suggestion. Um, if you have tough economic decisions we have to make, 
I think we need to reach out to the citizens more and give them more factual information about the actual situation. And I thank you for your time. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Peters, you're next. Richard Peters. Good evening, Mayor, okay. Council. Um, first, I wanna thank the EMS unit and um, the 911 unit for saving my life for about the uh, past month where I suffered a couple heart attacks and uh, kudos to them and, you know, thank you very much. Um, I believe that all politics isn't local. I personally think that politics is national. Um, I think leadership on the federal level is always um, where the center of the storm usually lies. And for that matter, I'm here tonight because I feel that our president should not back down on uh, this economic package where he to, to uh, let the uh, wealthy get off the hook with this uh, tax business. When I look at the soldiers over in Iraq and uh, Afghanistan and you know, we see our police officers in the street in the middle of the night, or we see, uh, you know, uh, the 911, or I'm sorry, the, uh, well, not only that, but uh, the firefighters going up at nine or whatever, the building there, and uh, we didn't see many rich people in those places. There was some falling out, with all due respect, but not many going up. And I think that, uh, you know, taxes should be shared you know, it's something that should be shared across society, and it should be a fair burden for everybody. So that's kind of my appeal for tonight, and I, I would hope that uh, the president and our country listen. God bless you all. Thank you. Hope you're feeling better, Mr. Peters. Uh, Mr. Savage, you next. Good evening, Mayor, Council. Um, I guess I want to talk a little bit about the. Uh, DDA, which I've commented on before, but also <laughs> I think we seem to get, forget that why we are in this economic situation. It was not because of an act of God. It was because of bad management at all levels. Be it the uh, Wall Street CEOs, be it the um, Secretary of the Treasury at the time. This has been going on for years. Two years before the economic downturn, the finance minister of Lebanon warned his bankers not to do any business with American uh, mortgage corporations. This was two years before the meltdown. And now all of a sudden it, it's like, God brought this on us? No, it was brought some bad management but we're still dealing with the people who brought us down. We're still looking to them for leadership, and it's not gonna work. Okay, I've talked about the DDA before. If we were to add up all the money that the DDA has spent along Big Beaver, and then try to figure out what we got for our money, I don't think we'd be getting very good value. And what brought this to mind was, oh, also, on that, um, a lot of it, I, I, every time I go by the, uh, uh, that intersection, which is every time I go out, and I see these, what are they, eight foot wide walkways around that park. In all the time it's been open, I have not seen one pedestrian, not one. So how did our citizens benefit from that? I used to come by that inter intersection and I would see the retention pond with the fountain. I can't see that anymore. So it didn't beautify anything. It hid what little <laughs> beauty there was. So uh, to me, that was total waste of money. There are no pedestrians there. So anyhow, the, uh, I've driven along Be <coughs> Big Beaver for over 30 years. I have never, ever seen one car parked on that stretch. Why would they? There's driveways, parking lots all along there. So I go down the other day, and what do I see? I say, no parking, stand and stopping signs. Well, this is not a big cost issue, but I'm wondering why it seems necessary after all these years of the existence of Big Beaver, now we can find the money to put up no parking signs. Not only no parking signs, 
between Rochester Road and Livernois, 11. No stopping or standing. 11. Every tenth, less than tenth of a mile. The money came from somewhere. And to me, I see it just as another waste of taxpayers' money. We did not need uh, Parkinson's for all those years. Obviously, we don't need them now. If this money was paid for by the DDA, then I would have to question where the DDA got the money from. When the city budget crisis was first announced in the spring of 2009, management produced a paper explaining all the reasons why we're, we have to deal with this, and one of them, of course, was closing the library. But the uh, management also said that we can't get any money from the DDA because they're broke. They just blew their budget on that intersection, but they're still finding money. Where is the money coming from? And I don't know, but I don't get any answers. I also did get some answers from uh, city management regarding the um, uh, count, um, uh, the, the consultants, okay? And I started to question whether in that cost to the city for consultants was money that really was, should have been paid by money that had been allocated to the DDA, or were they getting paid twice for this? Because part of that was their, um, their uh, work on, on the um, DDA projects. So anyhow, I see on the agenda tonight there is a resolution that calls for a review, one second, a view of the, review of the budget. I believe the DDA must be included in that review. I am confident that the money for the library is there, and you just have to look through the smoke screen to find it. Thank you. Our, our next speaker is Linda Kaima. Good evening, Mayor, Council. You must love coming to these meetings, knowing that week after week you're gonna hear the same thing over and over and over again. And then you correct the mistruths and you still hear the same thing over and over and over again. And the two new council members, I don't envy you, you had targets on your back the day you were elected before you were sworn in. This council is being blamed for the, the position that this city is in, for all that ails it. It wasn't this council that did it. Look at the minutes, read the minutes. This proposal one for the budget was in the minutes in, on September 28, 2009, when we had the previous council, and we hear about being fiscally responsible. The previous council sued Hooters. That was fiscally responsible, I'm sure. I'm sure I have my facts wrong. But I go to the library and I do my research, and maybe some of the people that speak here should go to the, the library before it closes and get the truth. Learn the facts, the budget is online. It shows where the cuts have been made, what's been done. This didn't happen overnight, but this is nothing but a power play. The Troy Citizens United are accusing everybody of being Democrats. I am a Republican, but please don't lump me with them, please. I am not a part of the TCU. I am a fiscally responsible Republican who wanted to protect her property values. The TCU is angry that they lost control of the city. The same council that sued Hooters, changed the charter amendment, jeopardized our AAA bond rating. I do my homework, so I do know what it's all about. They want control back. And that's why the day after the election in February, they're gonna recall because they don't like our new council members, because they don't agree with them, because they do a deep dive. And yes, you are a gentleman, Mr. Slater, and I thank you for that. I want civility back in this city, and I want the city back where it belongs, and it will not happen if we let TCU get control. Uh, before, uh Kelly Jones speaks. Come up to the mic. I'm going to call the next uh, few people, okay? Kelly Gross, Sharon McDonald, and Ellen Hudrak. Those are our next uh, four speakers. Can I get this too? Can I say something? 
Uh, sir, put your hand down. We're in the middle of calling people that are uh, that sign up to speak. Yes, please give those to the clerk. Thank you. Hi, my name is Kelly Jones. I'm a resident of Troy, and I'm here to speak about item five as well, which is the sidewalk on city property off of Brunshaw, just north of Hill Elementary. I provided some photographs and a copy of the letter that I sent to you a few weeks ago, as well as a petition signed by members of our residency um, in hopes that you will continue the path and continue the sidewalk onto school property. This easement has been city property since 1968 when the subdivision was established. We believe the original intent of this easement was for the residents of our neighborhood to access our public school. A sidewalk is needed at this location. Countless children and families use this easement to access Hill Elementary. There is a sidewalk for the community use just north of this location that runs between homes all the way to Windsor Drive. I don't understand why the sidewalk abruptly stops at this point and does not continue on through the school property. Sidewalk needs to be completed to school property, allowing for residents and children to ride their bikes and walk to school grounds. The homeowner just west of the city property has installed landscaping and obstructions on the city-owned easement. There are shrubs, bushes, a fence, two large rocks, and a compost pile preventing a clear path. We have specific residents whose children have been told by this homeowner that they are not to use this path. Um, there is a letter from one of the residents whose children have been told that they were not allowed to walk here, and there are two highlighted names on the proposal or on the petition. Those two people are welcome to be contacted by you whose children have been told they were not allowed to use the city property. There are three to four crossing guards from school who help children cross the street north of this easement. When it rains or snows or the homeowner activates his sprinklers, these children must then walk down Mill Pond Road, which is the main vehicle drop off and bus route, and through faculty parking to access the school. It's uncomfortable to walk on property that based on appearances looks like private property. The argument that this easement is not used often may be true because residents don't know this is city property. But we can tell you that it is being utilized much more now that the city has marked and zoned the area. The bottom line is that our residents, especially our children, deserve a safe, accessible sidewalk on city property leading to the school. It should have happened years ago. Um, I, I, I just want to reiterate to you that this, this walkway is used. It's used by our children. Um, majority of our children walk to school. We only have two buses. So majority of our kids walk or ride their bikes. and. Um, kids walk by themselves for the most part. I walk my children, but a lot of parents don't, and kids have to walk by themselves, and they should have a safe path into the school. And I believe that up to this point, there hasn't been a sidewalk installed because there have been no advocate for the kids. So I hope that you will consider the, continuing the sidewalk through. Thank you. Yes, uh, next speaker is uh, Kelly Gross. Good evening, Mayor and City Councilman. Um, my item of business this evening, this evening is to um, speak about the windmill um, pathway as well. Um, I am here to fight for our children. They can't come, and um, I think that um, I have three children of my own, that two of them that I do walk to school every day. 80% um, of the children in our neighborhood walk or ride bikes to school. It is a neighborhood school. Um, I don't think that um, they should have to go in the bus route or where the students are dropped off, and that is our only other alternative where the children are going to walk. Um, it's not safe, and uh, I, I am here to um, reiterate that and to... Sorry, I lost my train of thought. Basically, the bottom line is this, this, um, the sorry. Sidewalk. This, the city, the city of Troy, this is their property. And it's been their property all along. And I believe that this sidewalk should be installed in safety of our children. And I ask you today that it be installed. Thank you. And we do have your letter here. Thank you. Yes, next we'll hear from uh, Sharon McDonald. <clears throat> Yay, five minutes. Um, just a comment, um, the leader of the Troy Citizens United spoke 
And it was interesting to me because in the past she's shown that she doesn't really have an interest in the library. For example, when she said that she's a real estate agent and people never move into a community to see if they have a live and ask about having a library. They only ask about taxes. But I would think that's because um, a city of this size, who would ever think that we wouldn't have a library? Um, and my understanding is that not only did no one from the TCU attend budget study meetings where the possibility of closing the library was discussed, um, and I think Mr. Howlett missed most of them as well, if the TCU cared about the library, maybe they would have come up with another solution or perhaps they wouldn't have done their best to crush the citizen initiative proposal one, which would have guaranteed us an independent public library for the next 10 years. And yes, I know that we're moving on from the election, but I do think that the failed Save the Library campaign is worth studying because it demonstrates to the people of Troy who care about keeping Troy strong and prosperous just how the other side works, the tax fighters, how they operate. So the next time, I'm gonna ask the people of Troy that the next time you, um, the Troy Citizens United, Councilman Howerleck and Ed Kempen tell you how to vote, that you do remember a few important points. Number one, they cheat because they depend on a busy, uninformed middle. I know it sounds rude, but the truth is the truth. If this had been a fair up or down vote, proposal one would have passed easily. As everyone knows at this point, all of the crud in the world was thrown at us um, from the three spare proposals to this mandate that now is turning out to, to have no teeth, no, no meaning whatsoever. But, so the folks at the Troy Citizens United and their political operatives, some of whom are not even Troy residents, they just kind of know that they can manipulate uninformed people. And that's why they sent out the four, famous four-page flyer. Um, it contains a number of lies, including that the independent library would have cost two mills, says so right there. However, um, the whole election was about getting under one mill to fund the library, a rate that would have been capped for 10 years. So there's one lie to look for in the future when you're um, listening to people and trying to decide how to vote. Um, because you may have believed that if you weren't paying attention. Uh, number two, Councilman Howerleck, I don't know if he's just in their pocket and will never correct their lies. You think Mr. Numbers at his fingertips didn't know the difference between two mills and .9885 mills? Did he ever stop the proceedings? Did he ever stop anyone from saying that? Did he ever tell his friends who he speaks at their meetings all the time? Does he ever say, you know, maybe you should tell the truth instead of lying? No, because he's not looking out for Troy's citizens either. In his last minute letter designed to kill Proposal 1, even though he didn't have a better plan, Councilman Howerlick said that if Proposal 1 succeeded, we would have had to buy all new library and new books. And if that had been true, I wouldn't have voted for it either. But I did know the truth. I was paying attention. I knew the letter was a lie. Um, and I don't know why Councilman Howerleck didn't take the high road. I can only guess that if you're an ideological anti-tax libertarian, you believe any ends justify the means, even if our library dies. And then last Monday, Mr. Howerleck refused to answer Councilman Slater's question, what's your plan for the library? I think he said, I could talk till I'm blue in the face on that, except he didn't. His whole letter had promised there was a better way, but in reality, apparently, he had nothing. Still, the next night, he sashayed over to the Troy Tea Party, which had the same leadership as the TCU, and told them all about his thoughts on the issue. So I asked, what about us, Mr. Howerleck? What about your electorate? What about the citizens of Troy? Don't you answer to us before them? Just figured. Someone told me that he knew two people who sobbed as they voted no on Proposal 1, and I'll tell you why. It's because they knew in their conscience that Proposal 1 was the right answer. They knew we need a library, but how could they ignore the barrage of lies sent out by these people? They wanted us to blame city council for the fact that city revenues are down sharply, even though it's due to simple recession economics. And if they can pin it on this city council, they can fill a council with their people come next November. Because when they talk, that's always the second sentence. This city council's group up, next year, we'll put all our own people in there. And I think that's another thing you were advising them on how to do last week at the Tea Party meeting. I am not, uh, in spite of how I sound, I am not anti-TCU or anti-Councilman Howerlack. I'm simply pro-truth, and the people of Troy need to learn to pay attention. Get informed, learn the facts, side with the truth, 
before these people completely destroy this city. Google, keep Troy strong. Thank you. Uh, Alan Hudrak is next. Hello, my name is Ellen Hoderick, and I want to express my appreciation for the challenges this council is facing. Those of you in a voting majority who have been held back by recent changes in the charter and the ideological bent of some members of this body must be feeling particularly frustrated. I have worked diligently to figure out what is happening in this community and our local politics to create the divisiveness and confusion we are experiencing as we work through the current economic downturn. Why Troy? Why aren't other cities going through this? Why in every other pocket of the community do we work together, band together, but when it comes to the city budget and city council, we fail? I figured out the problem. It's an ideological, anti-tax, anti-government political operation rooted here in Troy. Started as a group that was striving to be sure money is not misspent or wasted, and I can fully appreciate that. It has, as often happens with these types of efforts, become a pendulum that has swung way too far in one direction and is completely out of touch with our current reality. The damage being done to the city's reputation as a result of this emotionally packed, very zealous contingent is huge. They are so emotionally driven at this point, it seems to be irrelevant to them that the revenue drop in the city requires more than a numbers-focused, left-brained, ideological-driven approach. It is driven by Troy Citizens United. They do not hesitate to create confusion, provoke anger, and mislead voters with concocted and outrageous potential tax hike percentages. And voters who are so quick to vote on sound bites fall prey to this. Many don't even seem to realize their taxes have gone down. Councilman Slater, you did the right thing asking Martin for the plan last week at the council meeting. We as a community need to step back, stand up, and really start questioning what we're seeing from this contingent. Because to use one of their phrases, don't you just hate it when a group can sway the vote with misleading sound bites and shocking percentages? Councilman Howerlick, I'm sorry, but I think it's shameful that you would actively work to take down the citizen-driven initiative, a solid proposal, a proposal with precedent in many communities around us, proposal one, and then turn around and say it's up to city staff to come up with the solution. I guess staff needs to find that pile of money that must be lurking somewhere. We'll, we have to keep looking, staff. You just have to keep looking. Your letter and Ed Kempen's petition implied you had a plan. Your sputtering response to Councilman Slater last week when he asked for it sounded like a career politician run amok. All I know is this city's very infrastructure is teetering on the brink of collapse. This is not funny. Our property values, our children are watching and are very concerned. Why this proposal one had to go down, why this contingent fought it like that, seems to be a political game. And you know what? I think a lot of us are onto it, and we've about had it. Please, please figure out a way if we need another citizen's initiative, let's do it. Let's protect what we have. It's not representative of our community, and I'm sick. I'm actually sick at what has happened. Thank you. Uh, the gentleman on the aisle that had his hand up, with, uh, would you like to come forward? I, you should have signed up out there, but that's okay. Come forward. And yes. would, you, would you remove your hat? Yes, Thank you. Yes, give us your name. Uh, my name is Brad Kelman, yes. and I'm a resident of Troy, Michigan. I've been living here for 20 years. I live at Somerset Park Apartments, and I heard about the situation with the library. Um, if you want to keep it open between now and June, two choices. Either uh, up the property tax or what you're going to have to do is come up with the money because if you don't, people are going to lose jobs. And we'll be without a community. We'll be without a library. 
I go on my days off. It's a nice place to go. People like it. And they don't want to go to other libraries like Birmingham, Royal Oak, or uh, Clawson. They would rather prefer Troy because they're residents and they don't want to see it go down. That's all. Thank you, sir. Okay. Uh, that concludes those that signed up to speak under public comment. And uh, next we go to response or reply to public comment. Uh, and council members, did you uh, wish to ask uh, staff to respond to certain things or did council members want to, uh, there was quite a line. Uh, council, uh, Mayor Pro Tem Kerwin. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I know that um, last week uh, the chief clarified some information, but it came up again this week uh, from someone who actually attended last week. And I know that um, a sitting counts, county commissioner used a photo of the chief without permission. The chief had not endorsed this sitting commissioner. Uh, when the sitting commissioner was informed by the chief uh, that his picture was used without permission and that he had not been endorsed, I believe that that was cleared up. Uh, it is an inadvertent use. I frankly see often candidates or uh, electeds who take pic random pictures and someone may in fact be in a photo taken at an event or in front of a building or, or somewhere and that ends up in a piece of literature or on someone's website and an assumption may be made about this. But I know that the chief did clarify that last time. I appreciated his clarification. I appreciated the um, sitting uh, county commissioner uh, coming right out and, and uh, clarifying that as well. Uh, but I know that that was inadvertent. Um, it's unfortunate, but I certainly would not be inclined to do a further investigation. We don't have the time or, or the inclination on something which was clearly explained a week ago. Uh, I have a question regarding the um, bringing up of sign placement on Bay Beaver Road. Bay Beaver is a county road. Uh, did, was there a problem with parking on Big Beaver and did the county place the signs or did the city place the signs? I don't know the answers. I'll defer to uh, Mr. Miller for that response. Mr. Miller? Unfortunately, Madam Mayor, I'm not <coughs> sure which signs was being referred to. I'll have, we'll have to seek clarification okay. and research. All right. Thank you. I, I appreciate that. But Big Beaver is a county road. Yes, Big Beaver is a county road and that's why I inquired. Did the county place those? Perhaps there, there was some problem and they felt that it needed to be signed. I don't know the answer, so we'll find out the answer. Was there something else that was asked in uh, or mentioned in um, public comment that council wants to address? We'll get to the item about the sidewalk uh, Hill School uh, as a regular council item. Mrs. Bloom? Uh, yes, Mayor, thank you. I just want to correct, correct an incorrect statement. Um, they referred to my salary. Um, I want to make sure that it's clear that those are not salaries that she referenced. Those numbers um, are not salaries. Thank you. Uh, we've had that item mentioned several times. It's been corrected several times, but again, uh, people still continue. Anything else, Council? Mayor? Oh. I, Councilman Howerlock? I'll defer to Councilwoman Beltramini. Council Beltramini. I was simply going to ask, I know, and there are members of staff that are tired of me asking this question, but Mr. Kerner brought up the closure of the library and the fact that it can't be done overnight. And so I'd like some brief outline by staff on what's going to happen with that. Mr. Zerley. We can present a brief outline with uh, estimated time frames next Monday. Thank you. Uh, uh, Councilman Howerlack? Uh, yes, Mayor. Um, I, I wanted to just get some clarification from the um, city attorney because my recollection was that when, uh, when there was the um, litigation involving Hooters, that actually Hooters initiated that litigation and not the city. Is that correct? Mrs. Bloom? Uh, one of the lawsuits that is correct, there was there were two of them, and I believe that the city was. Um, but you, you are correct; the the entire thing was um, initiated initially by Hooters, and that was settled out of court as well, correct? 
uh, that uh, did not result in any significant verdicts against the city. We were able to resolve that for um, very, very nominal sums. And the, uh, the other um, one item I wanted to correct was the um, uh, tax limitation charter amendment. That was not initiated at council. It's my recollection that almost 3,000 signatures were submitted to the city to put that on the ballot. Is that correct? I don't recall how many signatures, um, perhaps Ms. Bartholomew can uh, add on to that. I know that um, it was discussed that was a couple of years ago. I, I do not know the exact numbers, but they did satisfy the charter requirements, which would have been um, near that number. Uh, my recollection was that it was uh, initially uh, brought up at the council table, but did not receive the uh, supermajority uh, support that uh, was required. Therefore, uh, the folks that wanted to bring that forward went with the um, petitions. I can be corrected if that's incorrect. Uh, Mayor Patem Kerwin. Just in response to that, I do remember the first time I saw the petitions was immediately after the League of Women Voters Candidates Night, where many of us actually sat and walked into the hall. And, and uh, when uh, Council Member Eisenbacher, who uh, was on that panel, and of course Council Member Howerlack uh, were in the hall with the table, and there were the petitions at that time. Um, that's when I remember them coming out. Anything else that needs to be clarified under uh, public comment? Seeing none, then we'll continue on with the uh, agenda. Uh, first uh, item is a postponed item that's before us. Mayor. Yes, uh, Councilman Fleming. On H1, before I move a resolution here, first of all, H1, yeah. Before I do anything, I would just want to thank the city manager for, for working and getting the earliest date possible for the ICMA report from the consultants. And the, the earliest date that I've seen now is January the 17th that I understand uh, ICMA will have their report and we were basically waiting on that date so that we could schedule a study session. So based upon our understanding that we're going to have the ICMA report on January the 17th, I'd like to move the resolution to have this, the uh, study session the following week. So resolve that Troy City Council hereby schedules a special meeting on Monday, January the 24th, 2011, following the regular meeting in the council boardroom at Troy, uh, Troy City Hall, 500 West Big Beaver, Troy, Michigan, 48084, for the purpose of revising the 2011 budget and future year's budget priorities. Uh, Mrs. Barthani, I see you signaling. There is an active motion on the table, and so that would need to be made in the motion of a, an amendment as a substitution, if that's right. Okay. Yes, I'd like to amend that, that motion on the, on the table that had November the 22nd, 2010, as a special meeting date and replace that with January the 24th, 2011. Thank you. Is that a regular scheduled uh, council meeting, the 24th? So you're indicating that you would like that to be after the regular meeting? Yes. Okay. Uh, Support. Moved by Councilman Fleming, seconded by Councilwoman Beltramini uh, for the uh, amended uh, substitution motion. Mr. Zerlach? Are you also going to call a special meeting for January 17th? Uh, yes, I, but we'd have to do that in a separate uh, oh, yeah. motion yeah. here. Uh, now that we know the dates, that was one of the things I thought we were going to bring up tonight. Madam Mayor. Yes. Um, Mayor Pro Tem Kerwin. And I'd offer an amendment um, in the last line, which is for the purpose of I would replace revising with reviewing for the purpose of reviewing the 2011 budget and future year's budget priorities. Do we have a second to the um, amendment, to the amendment, to reviewing? I'll second it to get it on the table. 
of discussion of the um, Second Amendment, the changing of revising to reviewing. Council? All right, um, Mrs. Bartholomew, am I per, uh, correct in the procedure? We would have a vote on the Second Amendment, then have a, a vote on the amended substitution resolution? Correct, and then a vote on and, the amended main. Right, okay, thank you. Okay, um, the vote, Mrs. Bartholomew? Mayor Schilling? Yes. Councilmember Belchamini? No. Fleming? No. Howerlack? No. Kerwin? Yes. McGinnis? Yes. Slater? No. Motion fa that motion failed on the change of the one word from revising to reviewing, so it'll stay as uh, revising. The uh, motion then on the uh, substitute motion, changing the date in the resolution to uh, January 24th. Mrs. Bartholomew, the vote? Councilmember Belchamini? Yes. Fleming? Yes. Howerlack? Yes. Kerwin? Yes. McGinnis? Yes. Slater? Yes. Mayor Schilling? Yes. Motion passes. And then on the, uh, the last vote, confirming the vote. Councilmember Fleming? Yes. Howerlack? Yes. Kerwin? Yes. McGinnis? Yes. Slater? Yes. Mayor Schilling? Yes. Councilmember Beltramini? Yes. Motion passes. Um, Mrs. Bartholomew, can we make the uh, substitute, uh, uh, change the rules of procedure to have a resolution now to set a special meeting for January 17th at this point, or do we need to wait till later in the agenda? Whenever you'd like to do it. Okay. I move to uh, suspend the rules so that we may uh, have a resolution to set a uh, special meeting for the 17th of January for reviewing the uh, ICMA report. Support. Right. Moved by the chair, seconded by Councilman Fleming that we suspend the rules. Discussion? The vote, Mrs. Bartholomew? Councilman Yes. Okay. Okay. Kerwin? Yes. McGinnis? Yes. Slater? Yes. Mayor Schilling? Yes. Councilman Beltramini? Yes. Fleming? Yes. Motion passes. Um, I move that we schedule a special meeting for uh, January 17th to review the uh, information provided by the ICMA report. And the time. 6 p.m. Pardon? At 6 p.m. Before the meeting, um, it, there's, no there's, no meeting. There's, there's no meeting. meeting. There's no meeting. Yeah. yeah. There is no scheduled meeting that day? No, no. Okay. Uh, 6 p.m. I don't know why we're not just have it at the regular time. Why do we have to have it early? Your, your choice. Your call. We get done earlier. Yeah, yeah. let's do it. All right. Okay. 6 p.m. for the 17th of January. Thank you. Uh, do it. Moved by the chair, seconded by Councilman Fleming, that we, uh, the Troy City Council, schedules a special meeting for Monday, January 17th at 6 p.m. for uh, review of the ICM report. Discussion? The vote, Mrs. Bartholomew? Uh, Mrs. Bartholomew? I also Where? need a meeting location. Yeah. In uh, Council Chambers. No. Here? No. In the oh, I'm the sorry. The in the boardroom, yes. Thank you. In the boardroom. My fault. The vote, Mrs. Bartholomew? May I ask who the second was first, please? I was uh, Councilman Fleming. Councilman Kerwin? Yes. McGinnis? Yes. Slater? Yes. Mayor Schilling? Yes. Councilor Beltramini? Yes. Fleming? Yes. Howerlack? Yes. Motion passes. Um, next, we'll go on to regular business. And the first item under regular business <coughs> is a request for closed session. Do we have Mayor. a resolution? Mayor? Uh, Councilman Howerlack? Um, be it resolved that Detroit City Council shall meet in closed session as permitted by MCL 15268C, Strategy for Labor Negotiations. Second. Well, there's okay. two items. And? Yeah. Well, that's the resolution I'm putting on a table. If somebody else wants to put a different one on a table, then I will ask to separate, but I'd rather do it in two pieces. Okay. 
But your intent is that we'll have a second one that someone could bring that forward, correct? That's not my intent. My intent is to move forward with 15268C. Okay. Moved by Councilman Hauerlach. Do we have a second? I supported it. We can do it separately. All right. I'll support it. Okay, moved by Councilman Hauerlach, seconded by Councilman McGinnis that we uh, meet in closed session as permitted by section MCL uh, 15268C for strategy for na labor negotiations. Discussion on the motion? Madam Mayor, I'll, I'll vote on the original one instead of the one that has been substituted for this. So I'll be voting no on this one and then yes for, for everything. Sure. Further discussion on the motion? Mayor. She, uh, Councilman Kerwin was indicating that both, she felt both items should be in, in sure. you know, rather than separate. Councilman Hauerlach? Yes, I just was going to say that if the whole thing was on the table, I'd move to separate it. We'd separate it and have the two separate resolutions. So, you know, two ways to get to the same point. Okay. Further discussion? Vote, Mrs. Bartholomew? Councilmember McGinnis? Yes. Later? No. Mayor Schilling? No. Councilmember Beltramini? Yes. Fleming? Yes. Howardak? Yes. Kerwin? No. Motion passes. Um, I move that we meet, uh, council shall meet in closed session as permitted uh, at MCL 15268H, MCL 15243, attorney client privilege. Support. Moved by the chair, seconded by Councilman Slater that we approve the resolution. Discussion? Mayor. Uh, Councilman Hauerlach? Yes, I, I just wanted to make sure that uh, from the city attorney that um, when we do discuss the item in closed session that um, it's very narrow, our conversation, because um, I, I have concern, I, I don't have a concern at all about the subject matter being discussed. I think council needs to do that. However, my concern is that we're doing it in closed session. And so I, I did a little research and wanted to make sure that when we, when, we talk, when we use this as a reason to go into closed session, that this, the subject matter of the closed session discussion must be a written oral, I mean, must be a written legal opinion and not oral. It must be strictly legal and not public policy or other tangential matters. And it must only discuss what could legally occur because the point at which we discuss what should occur should be at, a, at an open session. And that is, um, I just wanna make sure that the discussion is limited in that matter. Uh, Mrs. Bloom, I'm Mayor. sure that was the intent of the request. Mayor, absolutely. I would not have brought it to you, but, uh, but for the fact that it is absolutely in compliance with the Open Meetings Act. Certainly city council is well aware of the limitations Certainly, council is well aware that there are some times when it is appropriate to meet in closed session. I believe that this is one of those times, and certainly council is aware of the limitations, and I am confident that you will comply with them as you have on other occasions, as you always have, actually. Thank you. Further discussion of the motion? The vote, Mrs. Bartholomew? Councilmember Slater? Yes. Mayor Schilling? Yes. Councilmember Beltramini? Yes. Fleming? Yes. Hauerlach? No. Kerwin? Yes. McGinnis? Yes. Motion passes. Uh, next is the uh, Museum Operations Grant uh, FY 2010-11 uh, Budget Amendment. Mayor Pro Tem Kerwin. Resolved that Troy City Council hereby accepts the Kresge Foundation's Detroit Arts Support Grant in the amount of $40,000 awarded to the Troy Museum and Historic Village. And be it further resolved that Troy City Council hereby allocates the first payment of $20,000 for the period of August 1, 2010 through July 31, 2011 to museum operations to restore services eliminated through recent budget cuts. Second. Moved by Mayor Pro Tem Kerwin, seconded by Councilman Hauerlach, that we approve the resolution as printed and read. Discussion? Madam Mayor. Uh, Council, uh, Mayor Pro Tem Kerwin? 
just really think it's important that we recognize uh, Lorraine, Director Lorraine Campbell and um, her team of volunteers, really, who have worked so hard to um, keep the heritage that has been um, the great gift to Troy, uh, recognizing the legacy and continuing to do so much to teach uh, not only young people uh, from the region and our own schools, but also to keep history alive and honored in our community. This uh, came after a great deal of, of work. Uh, I know that uh, the director has uh, written many a grant, and uh, I'm pleased to see that uh, Kresge Foundation's Detroit Art Support uh, has recognized the important work that Lorraine Campbell and her team continue to do on our behalf. I also was pleased to see I received the uh, email from the Kresge Foundation uh, person who's in charge of the grants uh, and was pleased to see that they were uh, awarding this because I know that they uh, are very generous to many other communities and uh, sometimes on grants that have been requested to the Kresge Foundation from in our community, they have not passed them. I know that they receive a lot of requests, uh, but I'm pleased that this, because this certainly is uh, well-deserving and certainly um, well-needed. Any further discussion? Vote, Mrs. Bartholomew? Mayor Schilling? Yes. Councilmember Beltramini? Yes. Fleming? Yes. Howerlack? Yes. Kerwin? Yes. McGinnis? Yes. Slater? Yes. Mayor? I, I, I need to clarify a motion on the first closed session calling um, pursuant to 15.267 of the Open Meetings Act. It requires a two-thirds vote. That motion failed. The second one passed, but the first one did. The second one, though, was only for, uh, no, the second one was only for attorney client communication. Correct. Right. We would need a... We had two separate motions because that was the request that we have have them uh, separated. So if someone would like to uh, bring up the um, original one. Mayor. Again, yes. Councilman Slater. No, no. In order to do that, you would need to do a reconsideration. Right. Want to do a reconsideration? Madam Mayor. Yes, Councilman Beltrami. I would move that we reconsider the motion made by Councilman Harlech, seconded by Councilwoman McGinnis, that we meet in closed session as permitted by MCL 15.268C to discuss strategy for labor negotiations. Support. Moved by Councilman Beltramini, seconded by Mayor Pro Tem Kerwin, that we reconsider the item as so stated. Discussion? I think that the reason that, uh, I know my reason for voting no was because I felt it should all be done in one vote, but certainly I'm in favor of uh, meeting for that reason. Mm. Hope the others are too. The vote, Mrs. Bartholomew, for reconsideration. Councilmember Beltramini? Yes. Fleming? Yes. Howerlack? Yes. Kerwin? Yes. McGinnis? Yes. Slater? Yes. Mayor Schilling? Yes. Now we're ready for a motion. We can have the original motion. We just need to have another vote, correct? Actually, the, the original motion is the standing motion. You need to vote on that particular right. motion. Okay. Or amend it. You need to discuss it any further? Council about to me? Question, Madam Mayor. I move the reconsideration only for the first motion. Correct. Right. All right. So we have a past motion, one that we, one that did pass, to move into attorney-client privilege information. So if we move the first motion, then we voted on attorney-client privilege twice? No. No. The first motion was just the section that went up to labor negotiation, and there was okay. a completely you separate said, motion. When you said the original motion, I thought you meant the one that was in the packet. That's why I was confused. Okay. I'm good now. So the vote is now on the vote that, on the original, the motion that was by Councilman Howerlack, seconded by right. uh, uh, Councilwoman McGinnis. Right. Okay, Mrs. Bartholomew? Councilmember Fleming? Yes. Howerlack? Yes. Kerwin? Yes. McGinnis? Yes. Slater? Yes. Mayor Schilling? Yes. Councilmember Beltramini? Yes. 
Motion passes. Thank you for finding that correction about the two thirds. Didn't even think of it earlier. Okay, next we go to the Windmill Point Subdivision Public Walkway. I'm going to move resolution A uh, because we need to have something on the floor to discuss. Support. Moved by the chair, seconded by uh, Mayor Pro Tem Kerwin. The resolution that I moved was uh, resolved that the Troy City Council hereby authorizes the construction of a concrete sidewalk and split rail fence connecting Renshaw Drive and Hill Elementary School which abuts lots 108, 109, and 110 of Windmill Point subdivision. Uh, discussion? 